So then the other prognostic, the most important, the new age prognostic factors of lymphoma are the genetic alterations that we see. What are the genetic alterations that we see? They are chromosomal translocations, aberrant somatic hypermutations, copy number genes, gains on amplifications, activating point mutations, inactivating mutations. So first thing is chromosomal translocation. The most common uh, genetic change that we see that we see in lymphomas are chromosomal alteration. Why it happens? Because there will be a lo lot of, there will be gene arrangements inherently happening during those gene, uh, gene rearrangements. We also see certain kind of chromosomal translocations. So it happens because RAG mediated VDJ recombination process and uh, adenosine deaminases uh, class switching process. And also these are the three points at which different chromosomal translocations can happen. And how are we going to detect these chromosomal translocations? Previously, we used to detect with karyotyping. It's a very tedious process because we have to isolate cells, stimulate cells to divide and stop them at metaphase and then see with a chromosome with, and identify each chromosome and then identify the translocation. Right now, we come into a more advanced uh, uh, method called FISH wherein we label each chromosomes pre, uh, in beforehand and we just use those kind of uh, probes. These probes just go and attach to the complementary sequence and we will get a fluorescence image whether the chromosome is translocated or not. So usually we'll be having only green or only red chromosomes. If the translocation ha will happen, we'll have a combination. We'll have both green and red. See, if you can see here, we see both green and red chromosomes. So a, chromo a part of chromosome from the red tag and a part of chromosome from green can come together and that will indicate some kind of translocation has happened. Aberrant hyper uh, somatic hypermutations we have discussed earlier, which will lead to increased malignancies and the related genetic change. Copy number genes. So we have to go back to, to understand copy number gains and amplifications. We need to go back to uh, the basis of cancers, what will cause cancers? There are something called proto-oncogenes, which are responsible for proliferation, uh, but which are very controlled. When proto-oncogenes get themselves converted into oncogenes, it causes cancer. That conversion of proto-oncogenes into oncogenes can happen through copy number gains and amplifications where more number of genetic material is there and which will cause more number of proto-oncogenes other than abnormally more number of proto-oncogenes which will lead to development of a cancer. Then activating point mutations, especially in case of proto-oncogenes. Proto-oncogene is very indolent. Once a mutation happens in that proto-oncogene, it gets converted into oncogene, which will cause to which will cause proliferation of the cell. Then inactivating mutations and deletions. Uh, how are we going to find out all these kind of genetic changes in the body? Previously, it was very difficult. Uh, we took about 20 years to just identify in the normal DNA, but the normal, who we call it genome sequencing, it got completed around 2000 uh, in the last century, in the last decade, it got completed. Then it was very difficult for sequencing the entire DNA. It took 23 years. Right now, just within one to two days, we get entire information on DNA. How is it possible? It is possible with the help of next generation sequencing. We, everyone will... Uh, get confused what this generation is sequencing. Uh, what they do actually, they already have a base DNA. They know the normal DNA. They compare the normal DNA with the DNA of the patient by generating multiple copies. Whatever change that happens, they represent it. So at one go, we will be able to identify entire changes in that uh, in that particular DNA. This is, a, this is how a lot of gen genes related information has been garnered in the in the last five years that has helped us also in uh, designing many designing many cancer uh, treatments and understanding more and more prognostic factors related to cancer so with this with this thing so how we represent the genetic information we call something called sarcos plot it's a very important mcq question and something what all pg students should know so if you see here so one, two, three, four, these all represent the chromosomes that are present. Then later on, the structural rearrangements. So if you can see here, I'll just represent the blue lines denote interchromosomal rearrangement. So there is some change in the same chromosome. The, the gene from this part goes to this part. So this is interchromosomal represents. 
and if the if there is a change between two different chromosomes translocation happens it is represented by red line so there is some change genetic material like change between 18th chromosome and 5th chromosomes and uh, point mutations are represented as red dots copy number gains means more number of chromosomes and copy number lo losses so in case of tumor suppressor genes if you lose tumor suppressor genes it will cause a lot of damage so these represent the copy number losses they represent copy number gains so with this information i am concluding this.